welcome to part three of this introduction to yoga. Today we're going to do a 20 minute flow that's going to focus on yoga for stability. So let's just get straight into it. I'd like you to step to the top of your mat and just take a little second to look at your feet. Push every corner of the foot into the mat. And what I mean by that is if you lift your toes up and you feel the ball joint of the foot, can you sway from side to side? Can you feel the soles touch the floor? Can you feel your weight in your heels? Try looking in front of you and swaying a little bit and notice where your weight naturally goes. And then when you feel as though your feet are well connected to your body, you can release your toes. You can straighten out your shirt, anything you need to do. Look straight ahead and take a soft bend in the knees. Breathe in and bring your arms above your head. And as you breathe out, just fold over. Take a second here. Make sure your feet are about hip width apart. Feel the release in the lower back. Place your hands on your shins near the floor, wherever it's comfortable for you to feel the release in the back and in your neck. And just take a minute here to let go of any muscles in the head or the neck. Shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. And then when you're ready, Bring your hands where your feet were and slowly walk yourself back to downward dog. So once you get here, again, readjust your shirt if you need. I'd like you to think about keeping the knees bent if you need to. It's more important that you're really pushing your hips up to the ski, the ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling. So Really think about pushing your hips up to the ceiling. Don't worry if the soles of the feet don't touch the mat, that will come with time. You can start walking it out. You can really think about clawing through the fingertips to take some of the weight out of the wrists. So you're pushing through your hands, through every single digit. You're pushing through your toes. Get your hips to the sky and you're looking between your feet or between your knees, wherever's comfortable for you. And we're just going to take a minute here to breathe in and breathe out audibly through the mouth. Bring yourself up onto your toes and back down. Any crunches are welcome, so long as they're not painful. Breathe in, bring yourself up to your toes and out, bring yourself back down. Again, keep your knees bent if you feel you need it. And then when you're ready, I'd like you to take a big inhale and lift your right leg up. Can you lift your right leg without opening your hip to the side? So keep your hips and your shoulders level. The only thing that should move is your foot. Doesn't matter how high you go. It is important, however, to try and keep your toes dialed towards the mat. So you're not turning out to say, hello. You're really keeping them down in one straight line. So you might start shaking a little bit here, that's welcome. And now you're going to breathe in. And as you breathe in, I'd like you to tilt your weight forward and bring that right knee forward until you're in a sort of plank position where you're curling over your knee. Can you think about really bringing that heel towards the glutes? Can you bring that knee towards your face? And now I'd like you to exhale and push it back to where it came from. So as if you were pressing an imaginary wall behind you with your right foot, you're feeling stable, you're feeling warm, hopefully. And we're gonna do that again. You're gonna inhale, curl over, really C curve the spine to bring yourself into a plank, wrists below the shoulders, you're pushing through your upper back, you're squeezing that right heel to your glute, you're squeezing your knee up to your face, and then pop it down. And if you get to here, and you need to use your right hand to help you bring it, bring your right foot between your hands, that's absolutely fine. 
I'd now like you to slightly bend that left knee and you're going to zip everything up from the inner thighs up. So in a balancing pose like this, like a lunge, you might feel your balance starts to go. And the best way to do that is to use your core, is to use your inner thigh muscles, squeeze them towards one another and lift yourself up. And once you're here, just notice how that feels. Notice the stretch in front of the left hip. You're very stable here, right? If you're squeezing through your midline, you can breathe in and bring your arms right above your shoulders. And we're just going to hold this for a minute. Can you think about tucking your pelvis under? So I'm not sort of squeezing my bum out like this. I'm really trying to keep a nice straight line as if my body were between two panes of glass and I'm going straight down. And if you're feeling really hardcore, can you lift up onto the ball of that right foot? Notice how balance becomes more difficult. And bring your heel back down and exhale. As you exhale, I'd like you to face towards the left, bring your left foot so that its edge is in line with the short end of your mat, and bring your right foot so that your heel is in line with the middle of the left foot. It may sound like rocket science sometimes. It sounds like it, but it isn't. It's about building a stable foundation in the legs. So you're engaging every muscle down the left leg, pushing into that edge of the foot for stability. You're bending this right knee so that it's level with the right ankle. You're not over it. You're not too far be beyond it. So just take a second to set yourself up and then breathe in. Bring the arms out and as you exhale, I'd like you to flip your palms to the ceiling. And I'd like everyone to notice if they're sort of leaning forwards to breathe in and bring themselves level. So again, you're between those two panes of glass and you can turn the hands back over if you like. And as you look over the middle finger of your right hand, can you think about squeezing that right knee outwards? So again, we're back between the two panes of glass. We should start to build a little heat in the left glute and the right inner thigh perfectly normal. And now I'd like you to breathe in and lean forwards. And as you breathe out, can you bring your left hand to your left thigh and bring that right hand up above your head. You're in a peaceful warrior. And take this opportunity to sink a little lower in the hips. Keep breathing. And now I'll let you to breathe in. And as you exhale, bring yourself back to worry two. And cartwheel your hands, right hand first, then your left, to frame that foot again. And just take a second here to rock in your lunge from front to back. And when you're ready, you can either go from all fours and into your downward dog, or from this lunge position, can you think about hollowing out your abs, squeezing that foot up like we did, and bring yourself straight back to downwards dog this way. And when you get there, exhale, shake your head a little bit, walk through the feet if you need to. Let your breathing return to normal if you were out of breath. And again, claw through those fingertips, push through your hands, through your fingers, you roll your shoulders so that they're not all the way up in your ears, but they're very firmly, very stably pushing into the ground for you. And when you're ready, we're going to repeat that sequence on the other side. So bring your left leg up, don't hit your table. Again, keep those toes dialed down as if you're pushing, as if kicking a wall behind you. Notice if it's different and if it's more difficult to Stay stable on one side rather than the other. 
Again, it doesn't matter how high you lift that leg, so long as you're squeezing that glute to bring it high and your hips are still level with your shoulders. And now you're going to breathe in, tilt your weight forwards, look between your hands, push through those shoulders, bring that heel up to the bum, that knee up to your face. And as you exhale, push it back. Take a minute here. One more breath. And then breathe in. Curl yourself up into a little ball. You have a very stable three-point plank here. Bring that glute and that heel to meet that knee towards your face, towards your torso, and bring it up. And again, if you need to use that hand to bring your foot between your hands, that's absolutely fine. So again here, set yourself up, begin with your foundation. So bend that back knee a little bit, squeeze through your inner thighs, and you hover your fingertips above the floor, and then bring yourself up slowly to rise. Again, notice the opening in that right hip. Readjust if you need, make your stance a little bit more narrow, a little bit longer. Notice if your feet are currently on the same line. You may want to split them a little bit so that they're one foot in front of each hip. Your hips are facing towards the front, your shoulders are facing towards the front. You inhale, bring your arms up. And breathe out, tilt that pelvis under. Really focus on that stability on your middle that's keeping you together, that's keeping you upright. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And if you're feeling hardcore again, lift up into the ball of that front foot. Notice the engagement in the calf. And then exhale, release. Inhale, and as you exhale, turn towards your right. Again, set your feet up in a way that works for you. So I usually begin by setting up my back foot. Edge of the foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat. Then I draw a line and I try and continue that line with my other foot. I bend my weight into my hips making sure that that knee is tracking over the ankle. And then I look up, breathe in, open your arms, and as you breathe out, flip your palms. And again, can you notice how you might naturally be leaning towards the front? That's perfectly normal. Just bring yourself back. Imagine you are a tree or a column or something very straight, very sort of stable. And that column begins here it rises all the way up to your head, as if it were a spine. Look at that. And your legs are the stable building blocks. I'm saying this so that you're not thinking about the burn of the lunge, of course. So now you're going to think about squeezing that left glute, squeezing that left knee out to the side. And as you breathe in, can you lean forward, place your right hand on your right thigh, and flip it, look at your left hand. Feel the stretch down the side of the left body and sink your hips a little lower. Notice if you find the balance more difficult, if you find this pose easier. And then breathe in and bring yourself back to warrior two. Exhale, readjust for one last time. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, cartwheel the left hand first, then the right, and twist your legs so that you're back in our little plank, sort of plank lunge position. That's a technical term, plank lunge. And then again, you can either go through all fours, have a little sway, sorry. Make sure that your legs are feeling okay. You can either go through all fours to go in your downward dog, or you can push through that back leg, curl up through your back, 
bring that foot up and go straight into downward dog from here. And now we're going to do something a little fun. So just take a breather in your downward dog, pushing through those fingers, curling through the fingertips. Just really take the weight off the wrists, feel it in your shoulders. And now you're going to look between your hands and you've got a couple of options. I'll tell you least fun to most fun, in my opinion. You can walk your feet up slowly, one at a time, so that you're back in your forward fold, so that your feet are between your hands. You can do a lunge, where it's the same exercise that we just did, and you'd meet one foot up to meet the other. Or you can breathe in, bend your feet, bend your knees, coil yourself up and hop to the front of the mat. And you'll notice that as you hopped, you exhaled. And we are all going to meet in this forward fold position. You're going to drop your head. You're going to push through your heels. You're going to roll yourself up slowly. And you're going to take a minute. Bring your hands out to the side. You can squeeze the fingers together and leave your thumbs out. Sink the shoulder blades down the spine. Breathe in, ha, ah, and breathe out. Very good. And now you're going to take your right foot and then you're going to swing it behind you so that you're facing the front, you're facing your right edge or the left edge. Um, and your feet are more than one hip width apart. And now we're going to make sure that our feet are facing forwards. Again, you can adjust the width that works for you. You're going to breathe in, bring your arms out to the side. And now I'd like you to bend your knees slightly. And you're going to push your hips back and glide forwards. And your head is still looking straight down. And you can hold it here for a minute, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bring your hands as close to the floor as you can get them. If you need some blocks, if you need some support, you're welcome to use them. If you need to bring your legs further apart. Once you're here, still with the knees bent, can you have a little, a little mosey around the hip area? Notice if one side feels tighter than the other. That's absolutely fine if it does. Most of us have a good side and a bad side. You're now going to bring your left hand right below your face. So there's a nice straight line. My wrist is directly underneath my elbow, which is directly underneath my shoulder. And now we're going to breathe in and open to the right, bringing our right hand above us. Notice the twist. Notice if you can make a nice straight line from the palm of one hand to the other. If you want, you can tip the head to look at the right hand. Just keep breathing, take it easy. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, swap hands. So your right hand goes right below your face. And it's as if you're drawing a bow. You're opening up the chest and the shoulder over to the left side. Keep a slight bend in your knees. Experiment with swaying a little bit back to front if you like, or side to side. Can you get that nice long extension? Breathe in, and as you breathe out, oh, get a hip pop. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, and for a minute, I'd just like you to lift yourself up to your fingertips, looking straight ahead with a flat back, bend those knees, and just exhale, release, fold over. Let your head go, flop about with the arms if you want. And now we're going to place our hands on our thighs. So we're going to make sure our knees are bent for this one. We're going to breathe in and slowly roll ourselves back up. The head is the last thing to come up. Notice how you feel. Dizzy is a possibility, don't deny it. And once you're here, just take a second, bring the hands together at the heart, push your thumbs into your sternum, bring your shoulder blades down the back, hugging the spine, and just look straight ahead for a minute. 
And now you can either jump your feet together, try doing this without looking down at your feet, or you can heel toe the feet in. I'm going to do a mix of both to demonstrate. So that was heel toe, and then this is a little jump together. Very good. And now just to close, we're going to finish with a posture that can be done with a block or a cushion underneath your hips. So if you need to grab one, please have one at hand. Bring yourself down to the floor. So just bend your knees, lift the heels off the floor, and then sit back on your bum. Here we go. Land with a nice little thump, ideally. I'm joking, you can do a thump, I don't mind. Then bring your legs out in front of you. Place your hands under your glutes and just wiggle the fleshy part of the buttocks out of the way so that you can really feel the sit bones going into the floor. You may need a block or a cushion for this if you find it challenging to sit up straight, if you can already sort of feel yourself rounding here. If not, I'd like you to flex your feet, try and curl your big toes forwards towards your face as if you were, you know, having a circle of energy from forehead to hips to feet to toes to back to your head, you know what I mean. Bring your hands on either side of your hips. I like you to tense the muscles in your legs. If you can, can you lift your heels off the floor a little bit? Sit up nice and straight and just look straight ahead. Your shoulders are relaxed and you should be a perfect straight angle. Engage your core and then relax the feet onto the floor if you had them hovering slightly. And now just place your hands on your thighs, let your feet go, bring your legs in, and as a little counter, counter posture, bring the heels of the feet together, the soles of the feet together, your knees are facing wide. Again, if you need to move some fleshy flesh out of the way, <laughs> sounds gross. Um, or if you need to sit up on a cushion, please do. And just sitting up nice and straight, we're just going to take a very passive version of this stretch. You're going to bring your hands onto your ankles or onto the insides of your feet. Sit up nice and straight, shoulders relaxed, and I'd just like you to take a minute. Breathe in, breathe out, notice how the shoulders lower. Breathe in again, close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Breathe out. In and out, and open your eyes if you have them closed. Bring yourself to a comfortable seat, cross legged or kneeling, whatever works for you, and bring your hands together apart. Again, your shoulders are going down rather than up. Roll your shoulders back and forth a couple of times if you want, and then bring your thumbs to your sternum and then up to your forehead. Give yourself a little bow for showing up. Hopefully this practice gave you some stability, if not mentally or emotionally, at least physically, you felt that you were stable. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all next week.